Home to some of the world's highest mountain peaks, Central Asia, with its stunning landscapes and rich heritage, is also among the most disaster-prone regions of the world. The varied terrains of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan range from mountain chains to grasslands, vast deserts to large river systems, causing the majority of 70 million people living in the region to be consistently at risk from an increasing number of natural disasters, further provoked by growing pressure on the environment and the effects of climate change. The geography of Central Asia is extremely humbling. You've got some of the biggest mountains in the world, you've got huge river systems across the region, and these geographical features have regular impacts. It's, it's an evolving situation against which basically mankind is powerless. However, what you can do, and this is what Dipeco has been trying to do, is make sure that people know how to respond and know how to survive in these circumstances. Since 2003, the European Commission and its humanitarian partners have supported communities and authorities throughout Central Asia in preparing for emergencies through DPECO, a global disaster preparedness initiative aimed at reducing the impact of natural hazards on vulnerable communities across the world. Implemented by the European Commission's Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid Operations, more commonly known as ECHO, the DPECO program has funded over 100 projects in Central Asia in the last 14 years for a total investment of approximately 47 million euros. These projects have achieved significant impact in terms of strengthening the capacities of local communities to better cope with recurring disasters in their immediate environment, but also by helping to institutionalize disaster preparedness at the local, national and regional levels. The approach of ECHO was to harness on the universal wish of people to protect their communities, their lives and their livelihoods uh, from the frequently occurring uh, natural disasters. Uh, the, the major criteria for uh, choosing Central Asia countries uh, for, for our investment in Deep ECHO was the exposure of Central Asian countries to natural disasters. Uh, shall that be earthquakes, uh, avalanches, mud flows, landslides, uh, and, and, and soil erosion or, or soil deterioration that has all impacted the communities in a negative way. And that was the major criteria that drove ECHO uh, into Central Asia. The DIP ECHO project was conceived of as a way to understand what the risks were to those communities, but also to help governments, civil society, and other partners actually go in and build solutions. Build solutions that were sustainable, that were meaningful, that would have uh, a long-term engagement with, uh, with, with the governments in the region, um, and, and truly speaking would help prevent, where possible, the impact of natural disasters from being as uh, significant as they had been in the past. In those initial days, it was hard to actually have them prioritize disaster preparedness. So in communities which had issues around uh, hunger, which had issues around uh, uh, really quality of life issues, access to education, access to health, thinking about an emergency that could occur, that might occur, maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe 10 years from now, uh, it, it was actually a, often a, a real challenge for us to, to overcome that and to have them see this as, as a priority because if steps were not taken in these initial days, they would be unprepared for when an emergency happened. The feedback that I received from the communities was clear that from their perspective, this was purely an act of God and that to intervene was almost blasphemous in a way. And so our engagement with those communities under the DePeco grant began with actually helping them to truly understand what those risks really were. Beyond anything that was uh, uh, not physical in nature, that was tangible, we took them to the areas that, uh, the origination points for many of the uh, disasters. We took them to the glacial lakes that were, that were high above them. Uh, we showed them through satellite imagery how those risks had changed over time. In Central Asia, there have been many iterations of, of how the DEPECO program has been used. Many of the NGO partners have looked at issues of water and sanitation or access or other key thematic areas. 
Uh, for us, it was really about building that community preparedness and, and it, underpinning that with an understanding of risk management. Often, remote communities in Central Asia are left isolated during a natural disaster, relying solely on their own resources to respond, at least in the initial stages. This made the creation and training of local community emergency response teams essential. With our initial framing for the Depeco project, um, we saw our measures of success largely being around uh, putting in tangible systems for these communities. So we wanted to first do a hazard assessment, provide communities with the ability to actually understand the risks, uh, give them the means to be able to create stockpiles of emergency materials, uh, support them in the development of community emergency response teams, and install emergency communication networks. Trained in first aid and in search and rescue techniques, they are also taught such skills as how to communicate with the government responders and how to safely evacuate entire communities. Today, in many places, these local teams of volunteers have become an integral part of the way these remote communities function. Last winter, the CERT teams in Tajikistan evacuated well over 2,000 individuals from their homes who were in the path of avalanches. Now, this is something that we didn't have the capacity, or these communities didn't have the capacity to do four years ago, five years ago. This has been as a result of the European Commission investment, the DEPECO investment, that we've been able to translate emergency alerts for avalanches to get those two communities, and based on that, even without us engaging, without the government engaging in many cases, they evacuate their own people. They know where to take them to in a village. They know how to deal with those that are most marginal within the community, those with special needs. Um, they have the equipment, stretchers, wheelchairs, all of that within the community to be able to take care of those that are uh, differently abled. Some of the successes of the DePeco program are best illustrated through two different natural disasters. The Dash disaster of 2002 and the Barsem mud flows of 2015, which both impacted the mountainous Gorno-Badakhshan autonomous region in eastern Tajikistan. The Dash disaster was where you had a glacial lake outburst flood, which, uh, which came down and uh, essentially decimated a village. I was there the day after the emergency, and, and I, I recall um, just how, how, how it completely devastated not only that village, but the surrounding community. The vulnerability that everyone in that region felt after that disaster, it didn't affect just those people. It really it, it went to families that were you know, across the region, across the country in many ways. Um, and uh, uh, the loss of that many lives in such a small population uh, was, was felt quite significantly. In, in Dash, there, was, there were telltale signs. There, was, there were ways that communities, if they had been enabled, they would have known how to protect themselves. They would have known where to go. They would have seen, uh, there would have been an early warning system in place. With Barsem, there was. With Barsem, under this project, uh, we had worked with these communities. They were mobilized. They were enabled. They had stockpiles. They had emergency communications, and they had been trained in what to look for. So at the first telltale signs of the water changing color, they knew to send out an alert saying, this looks a little bit suspicious based on how we've been trained by, by, by focus. Um, and that then triggered a whole community response saying, okay, let's move away from these areas. Let's look at different evacuation paths. Let's prepare. And that preparation is what saved everyone's life in Barsem. So from having numbers of people killed in Daesh, to having zero fatalities and zero injuries in Barsem, that's, it's, it speaks to, I mean, uh, it, that is the success of the project in a nutshell. To be honest, the example of what happened in Barsem is really heartening in a sense because it shows the impact 
that DPECO has had over the years in enabling communities to respond to natural disasters. We're often talking about communities which live in very remote areas and rather dangerous areas with a lot of different risks, in, in this case particularly mud flows. And here is an example of a community that was able to respond on its own, alert the authorities as well, and then work in coordination and avoid loss of life and preserve as many assets as possible. Of course, houses were destroyed, but nobody was in those houses. Additional community-based disaster risk reduction initiatives include disaster awareness seminars, evacuation drills, and small-scale mitigation projects constructed through community labor designed to protect communities from flooding or avalanches. <laughs> Material hoya ki in insho soktash das az armatur va setkoi setkan e bosha. In tarz soktashavi in in insho chini naske mo tar injo sandukchoy yani sandukchoy ros karagem ki in kishlo yagona dar mi jamaat bigem kishlo ki khaf tarin ana bahiso merad ki har sol az sababi boridani barfoy ziot. امی کی چیز خیلی همین همین چند روز دو روز همین جا حشری عمومی کردیم یا روز این این انجینیر As part of its programming, DPECO has also encouraged innovation in the field of disaster risk reduction. High-tech innovations such as the creation of earthquake simulators in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan or of the use of drones for detailed mapping of hazards in remote areas of Tajikistan, but also low-cost innovation, such as simple water purification methods that can help provide communities with clean water after natural disasters have occurred, or simple early warning systems that alert communities of impending disasters. In Tajikistan's region of Garm, in the Rasht Valley, which is particularly vulnerable to disasters, a community-based flood warning system is helping residents to better prepare for and minimize the risks associated with flood waters. Mini computer, yoki bo program ay maksus badi paydosh dani sel ba odamoni shaksi masul ba komitei holatoy fakloda hukumati mahali akboroti telefoni in shaksi masul badi shumidani sirene maydaki dar khojagi va joygiras me biyat bo chash mi khud vaziyat ro. بهودیه میکند آیا سل هست یا کی نیست در همین خلاصه بروریش میفهموند اگر با کنوب کهی سرخ زیر کند یعنی سل تصدیق میشود و اخبارات با دهای شل با پایون با همه این با منندی بونگی خطر گفته اخبارات میرود باز ایلوه کردن در کور که این سیستم با موجود تلفونی کمپانی میگافون کور میکند و با انتن پایوست هست این با شب با 252 نفر می تواند اخبارات تلفنی یا کی زنگوی وردوتی ورید کند برای خبرکنی اهالی به نهایت را کلام بازی کرد ما مردم کویستون از اگراسی گرمانیا به نهایت میندار حالا اگر چی کی صادر شود با واسطه سیرنا آگاه می شویم همه مردم یا شب باشد یا روز باشد تیاران که یکان حادثه از پیش هست کویستان منظره های زیبای خوب دارد مکان آدمان بزرگ بود لیکن حادثه های طبیعی را تنها علم معین می کند نه پیشگوی های هر یک آدم Innovation does not only stem from immediate disaster relief but also from advancements in new technologies that benefit and conserve the environment, like advancements in energy efficiency. I am very proud of you. We have a lot of benefit. We have a lot of cost, fast, fast. We have a lot of work. 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 
ابیت اخی تو این نمی بگیر از چیل پنج و بانکه روز کردیم. ما رام دیدم یاد گرفتیم رفتیم دخونام سختیم بسیار دگنچه های نخس بسیار دگنچه های کم مصرف دگنچه های نخس دو دگر نداره لباسات سرد هند بی دو نمیگیره. In addition to working with local communities, the Depeco projects have worked closely with local and national government institutions across the region, helping to institutionalize disaster risk reduction by building the capacity of the government emergency response bodies and by working to integrate disaster risk reduction into local and central policies, budgets and legislation. The approach of the DPECO program across Central Asia and all five countries of Central Asia uh, over the years has been dual with on one side working with communities so making sure that remote communities particularly are better prepared to respond at the local level and also at the other end, broader actions which would have more to do with capacity building, coordination of government actors particularly, both at the national, provincial, district and local level, to make sure that the authorities are also better prepared. So it's basically a, at one side a bottom-up approach and at the other end a top-down approach. Uh, and those two combined are what make uh, disaster risk reduction uh, programs effective. Simulation exercises have been conducted with hospitals and the fire department with the aim of practicing the implementation of possible contingency plans in each DPECO target area, including early warning systems, communication and decision making, and evacuating community populations to designated safe havens. Disaster preparedness in Central Asia has further been institutionalized under the DPECO projects through the strong links created between the community first responders and the national emergency management structures. For example, in Tajikistan, the community emergency response teams have participated in joint training sessions and drills with the Committee of Emergency Situations and Civil Defense creating a long-lasting partnership that will last beyond the DPECO presence in the region. In areas prone to natural disasters, the community first responders are in regular contact with the Committee of Emergency Situations through a network of CODANs and emergency communication devices installed under DPECO projects. سر ام دو دسترین قشلوق نویه روشخالان اقدام برنامه این چیز حمله شد. دیزگا وقتی این سوت دیانه که به من پدید چوز و دو چیز تو قریب یفت و دفت از این تو زدر مرکز نویه هر حکومت این دیف چیز شد هزا می یادتد ده به من دیگه چود تا اکی ده دیف فوکوسی که دیف میف چیزین رات سین سنه داده چیز یک بیت البته یک بیت روز مثلا پنج چهصد تا سویت چیز ریش میخواد داده چیز یک بیت هم جمعش وارد داد یعنی که با اوضاعی که دیف چیزین در اکومتی نمحلی نختی داد که یک دیف پریبلمایی نیم فکر چیز شد بر طرف چه On strategic initiative of the Emergency Situations and Civil Defense, the Red Crescent Society of Tajikistan and the Education Department of Penjikan District, and in accordance with the official authorization of the Mayor of Penjikan under number 213, dated 3rd of March 2015, we decided to carry out such activities to prepare school children for joint actions in the event of natural disasters. The DPECO program has worked to integrate disaster preparedness into the school curriculum. With support from DPECO, partners such as UNICEF, Save the Children, and Oxfam have advanced the mainstreaming of disaster risk reduction in education in Central Asian countries. In Kyrgyzstan and Turkmenistan, disaster reduction is now part of the formal education curriculum. Schools regularly hold practice drills for natural disasters such as earthquakes to teach children how to respond in an emergency. Under the Safe Schools model, construction standards and school emergency management plans have also been implemented to mitigate effects of hazards. If you talk, for example, of school-based disaster preparedness, 
today all five countries of the region have started to include disaster risk reduction into the school curricula. That is a huge achievement because that means that children will learn you know, about what, what the risks are, how they can cope with them, how they can face them, and that will have a huge impact across the communities and across the region. Beyond supporting local initiatives in countries of Central Asia, the EU has also promoted regional coordination in the field of disaster risk reduction. In 2016, the Central Asia Center for Emergency Situations and Disaster Risk Reduction was officially inaugurated in Almaty, Kazakhstan, marking a big step in this regional cooperation becoming a reality. Designed to better coordinate disaster preparedness initiatives at the regional level, the center has created links between government bodies, technical partners, and communities living in areas at risk by providing a platform for the exchange of information, best practices, and technical training, the center has helped to directly reduce human loss during disasters. With the support of local authorities and central governments, the center will function as the region's main reference for preparedness and response to emergencies. Ну, безусловно, необходимость создания центра она обсуждалась на протяжении более 10 лет, поскольку сферы чрезвычайных ситуаций она, понятно, требует скоординированного сотрудничества на территории с ближайшими сопредельными соседними государствами. Снижение риска стихийных бедствий и, безусловно, построить такой хороший региональный мост между государствами Центральной Азии, а сегодня мы говорим уже о Южном Кавказе, и институтами ООН, другими неправительственными организациями, которые работают в сфере снижения риска бедствий. На сегодня в центре создана вся необходимая инфраструктура для его успешной работы, для проведения тренингов, семинаров, включая кризисный центр, который позволяет осуществлять координацию при ликвидации чрезвычайных ситуаций. The 15 years uh, of, of uh, history of programming of ECHO in Central Asia has, has made the DRR a brand over here. The vision is a much closer coordination between national and community uh, level on the disaster risk reduction and also in between governments of Central Asia. This also provides an opportunity for uh, bigger players in the Central Asian regions like national governments and, and developmental donors to multiply and replicate those approaches on a much wider scale. The risks that the communities face are now truly regional. Uh, when, uh, when we have emergencies, they don't necessarily stay within one, one setting. When there's an earthquake, we find impact on, on, on all the countries that we're working in. So having mutually supportive capacities, having engagements with, with governments on, on all sides uh, has been critical to, uh, to building that platform. And the European Commission, as part of the DPECO project, in its regional engagement, has really supported that interlinkaging. After nearly 15 years of investments, the DPECO program is now widely recognized and accepted as an integral part of the disaster risk reduction architecture of Central Asia with many initiatives from past projects having made their way into disaster risk management legislation in the different countries of the region. This has enabled the European Commission to scale down its efforts in disaster preparedness, while the region continues to capitalize on DPECO's cumulative achievements. When I came back about 10 years later and had that same conversation with those same communities, it was a completely different engagement. These communities were, they advocated very strongly for, for protecting themselves. They, through the work that we had done to do hazard mapping, to understand uh, the impact of climate change, through taking communities and empowering them to protect themselves, um, they see now that there is nothing that they can't overcome as communities in this very difficult climate that they live. And this is where they want to allocate their resources. This is where they want to allocate their time. This is where they've chosen to now invest significantly in their own quality of life. I think the needs are still quite significant. And I think, uh, I think the, the opportunities to engage, the tipping point that we have reached 
in Central Asia, but particularly in Tajikistan, to be able to build on that foundation is a great opportunity to take things forward. There are other needs worldwide, we understand that. That's the reality of the nature of the world in which we're living. Um, I think the opportunity we have is to look at where we've been able to build and see how we incorporate that into other tools, other framing, other, other programs that ensure that we don't lose the great work that's been done and that it's taken to the next level in many ways. And that next level is into sustainable development. But the need will remain. And as climate change continues to impact this region, It'll be a need that is exacerbated more significantly than it has been in the past. The PECO has made a long-lasting impact on disaster risk reduction in Central Asia. By raising awareness, creating and training countless village committees in search and rescue, including school children and teachers, mapping disaster zones, and carrying out hundreds of mitigation projects, the DPECO program has increased the resilience of numerous communities to better prepare for and recover from the impact of natural hazards. This program has saved lives. The work that we do actively saves lives. And, and each of those lives, who, who knows what those lives will end up doing? Who knows what we've been able to enable but with the work that we've done? And being a part of that is, is, is more than any individual could ask for.